Hey, hello, hello, and welcome to the Social Pulse Summit Twitter edition. I'm super pumped to be here to talk about how to dive in and create a marketing plan for your business. If you've not heard of a marketing plan before, that's okay. It's a made up word, but it's going to make a lot more sense here in a minute as I share my screen and dive in to how you can use it to create a smart, smart, <laughs> see? It's even hard to say. A smart sales and marketing plan, marketing plan for Twitter. The reason why I combine it together is because so often I hear when I'm working with clients that marketing, they expect to be sales. And while it's not, I can't blame them while they're investing a lot of time, as I'm sure many of you are, investing a lot of time in marketing on social channels in hopes of it creating sales or ROI at the end of the day, right? All of our time is super valuable and we don't want to waste it. And while social can be a lot of fun when it comes to business, we also do need to prove, show, or have some kind of ROI that makes sense for us to continue investing time in it. So I want to create this marketing plan with you. And by the way, I'm going to give you a worksheet at the end on how you can do this for your business. We only have 30 minutes to do this. So I'm going to dive right in, but I should warn you, my personal mission is to help inspire others to love more, give more and be more through the art of authentic relating in their business and all that they do really, but getting to the heart of why it is that we do what we do and using that to authentic relate with others in order to create real, real relationships that will last, that will create that repeat referral business. So that's going to be at the core of everything we talk about today. Because when it comes to Twitter, I have to tell you, when I first started my agency, Now Marketing Group, 10 years ago, I used to do in-person trainings before the beautiful day of live video and what we're doing here. And I used to do in-person live sessions, free, teaching small businesses how to use social media. And they would often ask me, what's the difference between each platform? How can I use it for my business? And I would explain that Facebook is that sit-down restaurant. It's that restaurant where the people that already know you, feel comfortable with you, are going to sit down and have dinner with you and deepen that relationship, where I would explain Twitter is that fast food restaurant. They're coming to you, getting some information, getting fed a little bit and heading on their way. But it's not to say they can't have a great experience and wanna come back to you. And I still feel that way about Twitter. By the way, I explained LinkedIn is that networking group that they go to and rub shoulders with and get to know people. But Twitter, honestly, it still is that fast food restaurant, but I would explain it even a little bit more today. I would explain that Twitter is almost like that food court, okay, where you can get information from people and leave quickly, but you do have the power to connect and see a familiar audience that's hanging out in that food court again and again. I don't know what it is about food analogies. Maybe it's the COVID-19 that's happening right now, but truly that is what Twitter is about, where I don't see any social platform as a sales tool. Let me just say this in another way. I don't see social as the main point for sales. I do see social media sites like Twitter, a means to amplify your message and build relationships that will lead to more sales. But sales happen on your website. Sales happen on your home base. Social media is that tool that you can use to amplify it, Twitter especially, to drive more people to your home base where sales can happen. Hopefully that makes sense to you because I truly believe it's not what we do, but it's how we do it that will make all the difference. So while all of us are using these tools like Twitter, in the food court, if you will, to really share out. We're all presenting a meal of choice. We're all sharing our goods. It's not to say that each one couldn't fulfill us, but it's 
which one is really going to leave us the most satisfied and wanting to come back to them again and again? Which one's going to stick out in our mind? Which one has their own unique flavor that draws us back in? That's truly what it's all about. So using Twitter is that tool that can not only draw your audience back in, but the power of Twitter too, even though it's information rapidly, is that it also has that power to have direct one-to-one -one communication when used correctly to really get your name to stand out there. But it does take an art of outcaring your competition. Spending a little bit more strategic, hence the smart, time on the platform to create that sales-focused marketing plan that's smart that's going to produce that ROI. So I'm going to quickly run through the care process because I believe even though I'm going to dive into the tools that you can use in order to amplify this, it's about our technique, not just the tool, right? It's our technique that we use to these tools that's going to be the difference that makes all the difference. So we have to first focus on out caring our competition and care is an acronym that's going to help you easily remember what to do when we dive into the tools that's going to help you create this momentum growth in every minute that you spend on Twitter that's going to be amplified and not wasted. Okay. Cause Twitter is fast, right? It's a fast food restaurant. So when we're thinking about momentum growth. We have to look at Twitter this way. We're looking at Twitter in a way that's how can we connect our followers with us to create true fans that's going to want to retweet our tweets, that's going to want to comment, engage, our clients wanting to engage with us, continue following us to turn them into advocates, our community members growing our strong community that's going to keep tagging us, retweeting us, mentioning us, that's going to drive sales and traffic back to our home base where the sales happen. And how can we create this momentum growth that's going to create the sustainability, the only way for long-term continual growth that's going to be organic and maintainable with the without the constant pay-to-play model, okay? So CARE breaks down to this acronym. The first stands for how do we first capture attention? Let's get our technique right. We're going to dive into the tools. So our technique is all about capturing attention. In order to stand out and capture attention on Twitter, you first have to go in with a mindset of who are we? How are we going to show up? Like what's our tone of voice? What are we there to say? How are we going to approach the situation in a way that it's not what we do, but it's how we do it, right? What are we going to show up to, to this food court, if you will. Like, what is our, what is our look? What's our vibe? What's our feeling? And that starts from the inside out. So that starts with getting your brand manifesto right. That starts with getting your tone right. That starts with knowing truly who you are. Cause you really do need to know who you are when you show up on Twitter because you don't have much space to prove who you are and, and say what you need to say on Twitter at all. Right. So then you have to think about, how can I capture attention? So if I know who I am, now I need to think, how am I going to attract someone to come into me? And when I, we think about how to attract someone, we first need to think about who are we trying to attract, right? So that comes down to our personas, our ideal audience, our, you know, who we're trying to draw in and have this conversation with and bring them over to us. What kind of flavor do they like? But when we get into it, it's really about understanding what personas really represent. It's not just the demographics, like what their job role is, all of that, but we really need to think about the value that personas can bring. It allows us to build true, real relationships. So now we know who do we need to pay attention to on Twitter? How can we create a sense of empathy and connection with them and get super specific on creating in showcasing and connecting with the kind of content that's going to resonate with them that they're going to want to be a part of, right? When we're connecting and showing up with content they care about in a tone that's going to resonate with them, right? And connect with them on that meaningful level, it's going to work as a magnet versus a bullhorn, right? We're going to draw our audience in. I'm going to talk about how to do that here in a minute, but I just want to get through the basics first. So then it's all about articulating our message. Now that we know how we're going to show up, what we're going to create, now let's 
how we're going to create it. Articulating our message means this is how we're going to present our content and share it out. Now that we know what we're going to place at our tone, core basis of how we're going to deliver it in the feeling, the vibe, the context. Now it's articulating our message of sharing it out because everyone online wants to be a broadcaster. They almost think like, if I can share the most on air time, then I'm going to get the most viewers. And we all know that's not true, right? Like just because you're broadcasting doesn't mean we're tuning into your channel. It truly is about focusing on the right fre frequency to connect with your audience. It's also on that frequency that's going to want to tune into you. So we have to simply focus on our audience, not trying to be part of the noise. And here's how we can do this. When we know who our audience is, now we can think about, okay, articulating our message. That means what are they going to care about that's going to help educate them in something that they want to learn more about? What can we show up that's going to engage them with a question, um, you know, a, a, a participation, something that they're going to want to be part of, of this movement that they're going to want to engage in. What can we create that's going to set ourselves as the expert in this field or in this topic that they care about? So similar to like what we're doing here. If one of our clients wants to learn more about Twitter or they want to learn more about how to truly show up on social media and they see that these individuals are participating and sharing their expert opinions on Twitter in the Social Pulse Summit, it's sharing their expert opinion right? If I were to engage with them, I may ask them the questions on, you know, how are they finding, you know, their audience on Twitter? Do they use Twitter list or, you know, ask a sense of a series of questions that's relevant to them. I would ask, you know, to educate them, I would teach them how to use Twitter lists or how to use Twitter ads, or I could simply entertain them sharing something funny, engaging, topical that's, uh, you know, something that they they would resonate with it, it's related to them, to, to entertain them as an edutainment kind of piece. I call this the 4E rule of creating content. When we think about how we wanna show up and create content, then we need to next think about how can we draw in others to participate in this content because our whole goal is growing that relationship ROI. So it doesn't need to just only be our voice that we're sharing out, our whole goal is on creating community and relationships. So when we think about that, think about how you can plan out your content to share on Twitter that's going to get the most engagement, not likes, engagement. So I like to plan out what I call the 10 for one rule. And I'm gonna show you how to create this, but first I'm gonna tell you the formula. So the 10 for one rule is all about thinking about writing out 15 posts at a time. Now, now marketing group, we write out 30 posts at a time. So our theme for the month, we write out our plan for those 30 posts. And in those 30 posts, we break it down to 15 at a time. So on Twitter, we think about out of every 15 posts, 10 posts are going to be shared for enjoyment purposes that could be content that's created by our community that is applicable to our personas or something that we're creating that's not necessarily taking them away from Twitter. A great thing about Twitter is that people do click on links. They do follow hashtags in search of getting relevant topical information and it is part of the search engine results. That's all amazing if your channel isn't private. <laughs> That's all amazing, that's truly helping, right? But sharing that content on Twitter, the more that you share from others and engage with them, the more that you're gonna get noticed and they're going to engage with you, which is aligning yourself with their community. Again, turning our followers into true fans. If we're engaging with them, maybe sharing their content that's relevant to our audience, now we're turning them to not just a follower, but a true fan because we're engaging with them if we're doing it in a meaningful way, or our community into a collaborators. So if I'm talking about social media, I'm gonna be sharing tips that Agora Pulse has out to my audience because it's 
related, something they're going to care about. If you're in real estate, you may be sharing things about home stagers or home inspectors or DIY tips, things that are relative to your audience that they're going to relate to. It's still connected to your personas, but it's also building this alignment with other brands sharing great content that's now creating this community of connection where you guys are working together to create a stronger magnet. Okay, so that's every 10 post. The four out of that is going to be posts from your own blog or video or website that you can share to say, hey, look, I'm creating value-added content that's related to my audience too. Here's this content that I want to share with you. And then out of every 15 post, this is where you can share that soft call to action out of one out of 15 that's going to say, hey, join my webinar or here's this download. Those kinds of things that will draw people into your website and actually have a call to action that is about you know, them converting. Because first we want to build that relationship, right? We want to get to know them. We want to show that we're trying to focus on serving, not just selling. Bel belonging versus them just buying from us, right? But articulating our message is all about showing up consistently with clarity and conviction and some creativity in order for our audience to see what we're truly about. This is letting them know who we are and what we're all about. And Twitter moves fast, okay? So even articulating our message, even if we're sharing out those posts, we still need to be focused more on engaging than we are just posting. There's many days that I may even only share out one post on Twitter, even though that's not the best practice. I'm going to show you how to do more without spending a ton of time. But you want to focus more on engaging and building relationships than you are just posting. Again, Twitter's that power network that's going to drive people back to your site, but it's also that amazing network where you can have one-to-one -one direct communication where you don't have to feel like you have to be a friend of someone or connect with them and have all this pressure. It's the following. You can mention someone, connect with them, and build a very quick relationship with them. You can even participate in tweet chats where there's already a bot in community that is part of this thing, this the sense of belonging that you can just, by understanding who your audience is, who they're already following, who they're connected to, who they're already believing and trusting in, that if you show up with, with the intent of building a relationship first and adding value, you can quickly be adapted to this community and grow your network, grow your, grow your sense of awareness where people know you and are willing to support you, right? But it has to be first coming from the mindset of building a relationship, okay? So if your culture, though, isn't right and, and your team members are showing up on Twitter and your brand is showing up on Twitter and you're just pushing this sense of selling or you're not showing up in a way that is serving, it's never going to work long term. We have to start with no matter what we do with marketing from the inside out. So we have to first know, again, who are we at our core? Who's our audience? Articulating our message. And I know I said consistently with conviction and clarity. And the only way to get conviction and clarity is if you truly have your culture right and everyone is on the same page and they can truly sense who you are because Twitter does not mess around. They will call somebody out in a minute, right? If they sense any kind of fraud. So you want to make sure that you're asking yourself, how can I get my team involved in a way that feels authentic, right? How can I get my current fans involved and followers involved in a way that is creating this community, the sense of belonging, whether that's creating your own tweet chat, participating in a tweet chat, sharing community content as part of that 10 for one rule, or if you are just simply connecting with them and mentioning them online, you know, how can you get involved and join in in the conversation? That's all going to help you build relationships because the best marketing doesn't feel like marketing, right? It, it truly is just relationship building. Then it comes down to the exceptional experiences. If you're using this as a brand, okay, 
or if you're even a sales rep or you work at a company, people are going to reach out to you. They might DM you. They're going to ask for some help, some assistance on things. You want to make sure that you have an exceptional experience with every interaction that you have, that you're answering questions, that you're showing up to respond, to serve no matter what, or it's going to break the marketing plan, right? You cannot have any gaps in it. We need to make sure that we're creating this, this experience that people love working with you, that they can publicly see not just the people that are reaching out to you, but the others that are watching, because people are watching and taking note, that you're treating everyone with an exceptional experience. Because if people love working with you, they're going to insist that their friends and their, their business colleagues and everyone else does business with you too. But if they can see that you're dropping the ball on it, they're going to be a little iffy on creating and sticking with your core to grow that momentum growth. Okay. So that's the core of this, right? So now I want to dive into how you can amplify your message using this these principles. I'm getting excited. I have to take a drink. So I'm breaking this down in this workbook and some videos to go along with it since we only have 30 minutes. But you can go to learnrelationshipmarketing.com and get this worksheet that I'm going to show you on how to build out this carrot flywheel process. And now I'm going to dive into the tools. But really quickly, I want to show you, oops, maybe, this care um, workbook that I'm giving to you. So this care workbook breaks down asking you the right questions to understand who your audience is, but then in Importantly, the most, you know, what you're going to create than when you get to Twitter. So what kinds of content are you going to create and how is it going to stand out? So I love this 10 by 10 formula and I cannot anyway take credit for it, but Stephanie Liu created this and she says, okay, if you don't have any blogs already created on your website or you don't have content that you're thinking about sharing out, think about the top 10 questions that you're asked most often and then answer those questions. Answer those questions in a blog format, in a video format, whatever works out best for you, but answer those questions that you are most often asked as a brand because as you answer those questions, that's gonna become amazing content to serve your audience that's showing up you as the expert, you're educating them, you know, you can add your own flavor on it to entertain them, right? And this is some content that is perfect for Twitter. It's answering questions. You can back it with the hashtags that people are searching for. So make sure that this is some content that you write out, 10 questions that you're asked most often, okay? I'm sure if you don't know your sales, your service team, you know, um, anyone that works in your company, ask them, what are you asked most often? This is gonna help you create that first set of 10 blogs. The second set of 10 blogs is this, the, the questions that you wished you were asked, but you're not because... Your, client, your clients or customers aren't the expert in your industry. So I'll give you an example of this. We wish we were asked, you know, the top 10 ad mistakes to avoid, right? When our clients are creating Facebook ads, a lot of times they think they're Facebook boost. So we created a piece of content with Tony, Tony Christensen. He's amazing. But the things that we see that brand the brands are the mistakes that we see that they're making because they didn't know to ask this or to create this when they were first creating their ads, right? They didn't know about not letting another company create their business manager account or their ads manager account. They didn't know how to check for the pixel being installed. Like all those things that they don't think to ask because they're not the expert in the industry, we want to write about. So again, this is showing the expert this is helping, you know, educate them. And then we're able to engage them in real questions of, hey, how did you, did you ask these questions? Here's some questions that you should ask, okay? So first, we're creating our core content that's going to help us stand out. This is gonna help us capture attention, articulate our message, present it in the right way, build relationships, and then build our audience through the buyer's journey process to create this exceptional experience. So here's why it's important to use this to first plan out your content, okay? Because when you plan out your content, again, what I said at the very, very beginning, is the sales happen on your website. So think about this content, where it's gonna live on your website, 
And then what you're going to have at the end of this content as that call to action to maybe book an ads consult in the example that I'm sharing, or join a webinar, maybe something that you're hosting, or offering something that is inviting your audience after gathering this information to convert for you. This is what's going to shift your Twitter campaign from just sharing out content to having a smart sales and marketing approach to it. So we're not just pushing out messages in hopes that they'll stumble on our homepage and then maybe click to our contact us, right? We all know better than that. We're trying to guide them where to go. So plan out the content first that's going to resonate with your audience. Now it's time to amplify it. So instead of just sharing the content out once on your social channels, you wanna make sure that you're presenting your content again and again, but not just the blog title and the URL and some hashtags, but you're presenting it again and again where people have a new way of experiencing it. One way I love to do this is I love to do a video on it. <laughs> so I will actually create a free Training Tuesday webinar where I will go live on a subject matter that I think is rel related to um, something our audience cares about. Once we go live, then we do this live on our Facebook page, it streams to our YouTube, it streams to our Twitter account, it streams to LinkedIn. Then we take that live video, the audience that's showing up live, they're watching it, we're engaging with them. Once that live is over, we convert it into a blog. Okay, we take the context of that video, convert it into a blog. You can do this easy as well if you just, you know, we have someone that uh, writes our blog for us. Shout out to Julia, she's presenting on here. But she will transcribe our blog and then add our context in it with some additional resources. You can do this very easy if you just stream your video live to be helpful, if you can present in that way and you feel comfortable. Then you can go to rev.com, so R-E-V.com, and you can very quickly and easily transcribe that video into a piece of blog content, okay? That blog content now can live on your website. If you don't have a website, create a free medium or Patreon account or something that's going to host your content that is your home base because sales happen on your home base, not just on social channels. But now you have this blog piece of content. Now, if you didn't know already and you um, are using Agora Pulse, there's two of my favorite tools I love to use. One is Agora Pulse. So I love to go into Agora Pulse first and I go into you know the calendar section of uh, the creating content and then I will go to publish content and I will, oops, it's freezing on me. <clears throat> and I will take the publishing section of this piece of content and you can republish your piece of content multiple times. So now I think it changed social channels on me. Let me get to mine. Let's get to Twitter. Since we're talking about it. Okay, so you can go to this handy dandy section of Agora Plus that's already built in and you can go to the publish bulk publishing section and you can import from your website. So if you have a website, which I can just grab this website URL now that we're publishing content. Oh, let me grab somebody else, but that's okay. I'm gonna just show you a demo. I can select our blog and I can select a piece of blog content from our website, automatically feeding in all these pieces of content. And I can say that I want to schedule this. I can choose the frequency and how often that I want to schedule this next. So I'm not gonna um, choose this here. So I'm gonna say when I want it to start, do I want to republish right? you know, on a reoccurring basis? Do I wanna just schedule it one more time? And I can choose right here to schedule this content. Okay, this is going to repeat 
this certain blog post again and again. But remember how I said that I don't want to just, um, let me show you actually our piece of content here. Remember how I said I don't want this to just be um, the blog title though. And um, I don't want this to just be the blog title and the blog post URL. So you can customize this and make it what you want. So I'm going to show you one other section here. Let me get into my channel. Here we go. All right. So let's feed it in the blog now. All right. So I can either add this to my, my queue on publishing ongoing, or I can choose to schedule this. I choose when it starts how often I want this to republish. And then Agora Pulse has this amazing thing where they let you have some saved hashtags even in it. So here we go. I can choose if I want this part of uh, a label or a campaign, if I want to republish this regularly, uh, how many days, how many times uh, do I want this to publish? And once I do that, I can then go into each time, so I'm not gonna do this now. Let me first show you one other thing. I can edit this first before it schedules out. I can grab some hashtags that are already saved, or I can save, let me just call these Jessica. I can name some hashtags, like relationship marketing. Whatever I want is my hashtag, hashtag grouping. I'm going to show you some others here. So it will automatically grab in these hashtags that we have and that we've already saved. And we can schedule this ongoing with all the hashtags and repeat that blog sequence. And we can even change what it says uh, for each blog because it's going to tell you here. Okay. So I love using Agora Pulse for this. I also love using one other tool that I'm going to show you that's going to save you a crap ton of time. It's called Missing Letter. So every time we publish a new blog, like this is the one we just published four hours, <laughs> six minutes ago, it'll literally pull in automatically from our blog post. And I can click on this. And it's automatically going to come up with hashtags that we can use, or we can select some hashtags that we want to be included. If there's anyone that I should mention in this blog, images, it will pull from the blog itself, or we can add, oh, look, there's Christine. <laughs> or we can pull um, additional blog, or you know, some images that we can use. And then it's gonna give us 365 days of unique post to use on Twitter. Here's why this is important, okay? When you're creating content for Twitter and sales happen on your home base, the key to making it a smart sales and marketing plan is having a plan of content that you know that you want to go out for the 30 days. And having this planned out, again, that 10 for one rule, right? That's 30 days of your content. But you should always also have unique content to you. And so it's not the same blog post and the same blog URL, but another way of presenting this piece of content in a way that's engaging, that's grabbing a snip, snippet of this piece of content in order to present it out. Okay. It's only going to be noticed though, when, after, you know, you're engaging with others, but this is at least allowing you to schedule out content quickly so you can spend more of your time engaging. So I love using Missing Letter. It will grab snippets of our blog post here very quickly, allow us to choose which pieces and snippets that we wanna use as the post itself. So let's just say that I selected all of these and those hashtags. I can click Build Campaign. It's going to give me a bunch of different ad posts in images automatically that will create our content and track it 
automatically. Then we can click launch campaign. I want to show you um, some con some campaigns that are already launched here. And we get the most link clicks. Already 97 link clicks on this one, 22 on this one that was started a month ago, 81 on this one that was started five months ago. And it goes out usually like once every four weeks or so. It creates a lot of clicks back to the website because it's content that's resonating with their audience that doesn't feel just like a link click. Okay. That's one way of getting your content out there without overthinking it. Okay. That's amplifying and articulating your message. The next tool and tactic that I use for this, and I'm sure it's been said again and again, but using your social channel and creating lists, lists for who you want to engage with. So if you go to your social uh, Twitter platform and you can click on this section called lists, you can either create a new list or you can join others. And this list allow you to add people that you want to create a connection with and bring them into one group. So you make sure that you're maximizing your time of when you have on Twitter to engage. So I love this because I will, you know, literally add people that are, you know, Twitter smarter guests, people that I've been on tweet chats with, which is also a great way of amplifying your message and building community, right? but I will add them to lists that I've created. So I'm gonna go down to one on, um, blah, blah, blah. all right, Marketing Rockstars. <laughs> this is one that I created that was a private group. And now I can engage with them. These are people I wanted to build a relationship with at one time. I can quickly engage with them. And now I am focusing my time effectively to build these relationships. Now I can quickly share, you know, their content to be part of my 10 for one and you're getting noticed more often. I'm sure Twitter lists aren't a brand new thing for you, but it is something that we sometimes forget to use. So think about Twitter strategically. Okay. First, the content you're putting out next, who you're engaging with, but truly how you are showing up right? Remember when you're on Twitter, it is still the relationship marketing platform. So when you're seeing content that's directed to you, reply in a way that's meaningful, that is engaging, right? And I know this is so easy to say, but very often not followed up with. Use the inbox in a respective way where you're sending back a video message reply. Look at who your community is to see who can I get involved with to one, create a Twitter list for, two, see what communities they're already connected with. So like I mentioned, Twitter chats that you can get involved with. And this is all part of this worksheet that I have open here that talk about who are your activators. Who are your activators? And look at who can I connect with that already has this built trusted community that I can get involved with, that I can connect with and have more of an impact during my time on Twitter. When you look at that and, and truly go in with the heart of engaging, that's really going to open up some doors for you. So here's my last tip with creating this relationship marketing uh, process, which there's a ton more in this this workshop and this uh, download that I'm going to give you is after you created your 10 most freaking last questions in your 10, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold air in your 10 most uh, questions that you wished others would ask. Now you want to think about what kinds of content can I create that truly gets others talking? Okay. So now that I know my community, who I want to connect with, who I want to um, build this community with, then we'll start thinking about the content that you can include them in so you can mention them on Twitter. Not just sharing their content, but actually mentioning them on Twitter. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Collaborative blog pieces. So like, for example, I have mentioned, you know, um, or asked 
my good vibe tribe, as I like to call them, what is your best tip of building your craveable brand in 2020? Now, of course, we're going to be doing this in 2021, but I ask their feedback and tips. I featured them first and foremost, not about me. It's about them, their tips, and their suggestions. Once they give me their tips and their suggestions, guess what I'm sharing out all year long? And guess what I have added into my blog post? Click to tweet. So it's mentioning them, this blog article, and sharing it out, driving more traffic back to our home base where sales happen, building relationships by amplifying others, and giving an easy experience for people able to share this tweet. That's how you can tie your sales and marketing together in a smart way. You're focusing the marketing, which is starting with from the inside out. It's creating that culture that people want to talk about, want to be involved with. Sales, which has a strategy and doing it in a smart way that's building experience and reducing friction for people being able to engage with you. This is really, truly a process that anyone can do. I'm going to give you again this worksheet that it also has some videos attached with it that breaks down even more strategies. I know we have 30 minutes together, but I just want you to think differently about Twitter and how you can truly use it in a smart way that creates a sales and marketing process. So Again, Jessica Phillips here, Now Marketing Group, the relationship marketing system. I can't wait to hear from you some of your best tips and tactics that you've heard on Twitter. There's a ton of freaking rock stars on here. I'm hoping I shared something of value with you, and I would love to stay connected. The worksheet, again, go to learnrelationshipmarketing.com. You'll not only grab the worksheets, the workbook, but also some videos by some experts that break down that full care process that you can use on any network. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of the summit, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Bye.